I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about HTML5 and CSS3 login forms, setting up Sublime Text 2, and much, much more. Let's check it out. First up is this really cool blog post over on Code Drops is about. It co- oh, I thought it was Cod Drops. Or, or Cough Drops? I don't know. It's basically a login and registration form built in HTML5 and CSS3. Hmm. So let's go ahead and take a look at the demo here. And here you can see there is a login form. So we can go ahead and type in an email address or username. And then we can go ahead and type in a password. And then I can say log in. Oh, actually, I don't have an account. So I need to go ahead and register. So I'll hit join us. And there you can see it just switches right over to the sign up form. And I can go ahead and type in all of my information and sign up. So there must be a lot of JavaScript going on back there. You would think that, Jason, that wouldn't you? Think, you can yeah. actually switch back and forth between these two forms, and you would think that it's actually JavaScript driving that. And of course, there are other bits of animation here. So there's three different demos. But in fact, it's actually not JavaScript driving that at all. What? So if we can go ahead and go back to the Code Drops article. Right here, it says that it's actually the pseudo class target in CSS3 that is driving all of this. Wow. So basically, it's not using JavaScript at all. It's actually being driven off of just CSS3, animations, etc. And it's pretty, pretty cool. It's a little bit advanced. So I recommend you go and check out the article and just Break it down, see how it works. It's that's pretty cool. That's really amazing that you can do that without using any JavaScript. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, um, definitely a cool technique. Uh, so next up, we have a project called xy.css. Now this is extremely interesting. This is a percentage-based liquid uh, layout, columnar layout design matrix. I understood some of those words. Yeah, a lot of words there. What do they mean? Well, let's say you have a web page, right? And you want columns on it, maybe in a grid. If you're designing it with a percentage-based layout, well, that's going to be pretty difficult to do, you know, keep those columns uh, centered. So what this does is it actually gives you a responsive way of keeping two columns on the page, say 25% and 75%. And as you resize your browser or go to different sizes, that ratio will be maintained. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, it is. So there's, and it's even done semantically with HTML5 <clears throat> and uh, the different tags. So if you, it gives you a certain number of grid columns. Uh, I believe it's 12 different grids. And then if you want one column up to nine columns, you use the grid underscore and then the number of columns that you want. It is extremely easy to use and there's just a ton, a ton of different options. You see a, a little demo here. Click on the basic example. You can see this layout right here. If I were to resize the browser, which I'm not right now, not for any particular reason, I'm just not, uh, it would actually keep the ratios when you resized it. Anyway, great project, xy.css. Next up is this really cool post over on the David Walsh blog, mm. whom is a friend of the show. If we go ahead and scroll down the post here, we can take a look at CSS at supports, which is basically a new CSS directive that I believe is available in Firefox, Chrome, and Opera right now in the nightly builds. So this isn't actually available in the normal shipping builds that you would uh, just find on their websites. You actually have to go and get the nightly builds. Oh. But um, it's this new CSS directive that allows you to determine whether or not the browser supports a certain property and a certain value. So you can first go ahead and check for that. And then if it does support those particular properties and values, you can apply styling. So this is very similar to the way the media directive or media query would actually work because you can go ahead and conditionally apply CSS based on, well, certain conditions. 
basically you can detect whether or not the browser supports those features and then only apply them if the browser actually indeed does support those features. So pretty cool. It, I mean, it's much better than doing feature detection yeah. or browser sniffing and trying to figure that stuff out with you know all sorts of JavaScript beforehand because you can just go ahead and do it right in the CSS. So that's cool because you don't have to change your code as browsers support new things. Mm. You can just basically say like, you know, if this browser supports uh, these particular properties, go ahead and apply this new uh, this new property now that it works in this browser. Yeah, so. make the text blink. Yeah. Add a marquee. Of course. Yeah. I mean, that's what we all want to do. Uh, on a serious note, though, that does seem like a much cleaner way to yeah. do it than we have right now. Yeah, no, very cool. Uh, so next up, we have a blog post from Alex McCaw on setting up Sublime Text 2. Uh, Sublime Text 2 is a text editor that seems to be all the rage these days. Uh, a lot of people are switching to that, and the reason being, it's a great editor. It's what we use on Treehouse for most of our screencasts. Uh, so anyway, Alex walks you through how to set up Sublime Text 2. He doesn't walk you through absolutely everything, but just some of his preferences and options. First thing that you're going to want to do is install package control for Sublime Text. Package control is uh, basically a package management system that lets you install plugins and themes right inside of Sublime Text without leaving it or messing around with downloads and things like that. Uh, from there, he walks you through installing some themes, uh, how to extend the editor with sidebar enhancements, and then the whole tabs versus spaces debate. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what the right answer is because there is no right answer. Uh, anyway, goes through. This is a really nice introduction for somebody who is setting up Sublime Text for the first time, maybe hasn't done it yet. Um, yeah, great text editor. Very cool stuff. Next up... Wait, oh, wait, sorry, if I may sorry. stop you, Nick. You may. We're going to do something new this week. I know that we're a tech show, uh, but very briefly, we're going to take a look at the weather for the week. Oh, all right. Let's take a look. Well, it looks like we have a uh, very handsome week ahead. Hmm, indeed. Next up is Metrize icons. So if you're familiar with Microsoft's Metro style. Which you should be because we talked about it here on the show before. We have talked about it on the show. So if you've been watching the show, you would you would know about that. Yeah. Uh, basically, it's just an icon set for the Metro style. So if you're designing Metro style apps for, say, a Windows phone, or maybe you're designing a web app that is sort of targeting Windows phones, then this is a really cool icon set that you'll want to check out. It has all of the things that you would typically expect, you know, your social icons for YouTube and Twitter and, you know, basically anything else you could want out of a, a decent icon set. So there's no treehouse icon. No, there's not. <clears throat> I thought that was a little bit weird. Yeah, but, uh, we're not docking any points, but uh, might not mention it again. But, uh, you know, it, it's, in all seriousness, it is, you know, a pretty nice icon set. Not a whole lot to say about it other than it's uh, it's Really nice. Yeah, it would go well with the flat UI theme that we talked about oh. on last week's show. Oh, I see I see the narratives kind of weaving together here. Full circle, everybody. Full circle. Treehouse show. That's our motto. Nice. Next up, we have a project called Magic Suggest. This is an auto-suggest combination bootstrap theme using jQuery. What do those all those words mean? Uh, it means this. If you've got a text box right here and you want to find something, just type in something right here. Boom. Click it right in the box there. You know, get a little tab, what you're talking about. And uh, you can have as many different options as are in the drop down there. As you would expect, since it's built on jQuery, very extensible, very easy to use, and drop right into an existing site. Very cool. Well, next up is this really amazing article about CSS masking. Now, I will warn you, this is a little bit more advanced than we have time to really dig into here on the show. So I do recommend that you check out the article, which you can check out in our show notes on YouTube or iTunes. However, let's take a look really quick. So basically, you can go ahead and mask various images or say SVGs inside of your CSS using the clip path property. Yeah, I think we've all been in the situation where we have an image on our web page and we think it would be great if I could add you know, a bunch of slices to it. 
maybe make this make it circular, um, um, like a circular mask. I, I I have actually been in that situation, and we've all been there. It's yeah, nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah, and uh, this this would have been really handy. So basically, what they're suggesting is instead of just including that type of transparency in a PNG image, you would actually include it as a mask. Now, why, why would you do this? Why wouldn't you just use a PNG? Well, if we're looking at an image like the one displayed here, it's actually a really complicated JPEG image, which would not compress nicely at all in, say, a 24-bit ping. Now, at the size it might, but if it were you know, much larger, it would be much, much more convenient to just go ahead and apply a, a clip mask like we've done here. So uh, that can actually save a lot of bandwidth by using a JPEG and then applying a mask on top of it. You can, of course, apply a mask to other page elements. So here is a scrolling list that has sort of a, you know, a jagged edge on the top and bottom. And you can even animate these clip paths. So if I go ahead and hover over this, we have this uh, really novel and annoying animation. This, sure this is there's... what the web has been missing. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I think this plus blink and marquee is really what we've been missing. I think that we're ushering in a new era of banner ads. It's, it's very possible. However, I'm, I'm sure that there is actually a real legitimate application for this. I'm sure there's actually something really cool that you could do with this. Like with any new piece of technology, it's always kind of difficult to see how you might apply that in the real world, but there's, you know, there's plenty to discover there. So definitely check out the article and uh, see how you might want to use it on your site. And so uh, I think that's all we have for this week. Nick, who are you on Twitter? I am at Nick RP. And I am at Jay Cipher. For more background on anything we talked about, you can check out the show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse. We are also in iTunes. Just search for The Treehouse Show. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. If you'd like to see more advanced videos and tutorials like this one, go to teamtreehouse.com and start learning for free.